Here in section 2.6, we are going to define what we call the derivative. The derivative is a really important concept that we're going to be using throughout calculus. And it basically measures the rate of change of a function at a particular point. So in order to define the derivative, we're going to look at what we call the tangent line. So the tangent line to a curve, so let's look at the curve here, y equals f of t, so this is f of t. Um, what we want to know is if we look at a particular point on the curve, how is the curve, what is the rate of change at that particular point along the curve? In order to measure the rate of change at a single point, we want to look at the tangent line. And more specifically, we're going to focus on the slope of that tangent line. So the slope of any line is the what we call the rise over the run, or the change in y with respect to the change in x. So as x is changing, how is y changing? Sometimes we use this little delta, delta y, delta x to represent change in y over change in x. So if you see that, that's what that means. So if I want to know the rate of change at this particular point, um, then I'm going to measure the slope of the tangent line at that point. So that's going to be 4, the change in the y direction, divided by the change in the x direction. So the slope at that particular point is 1 third. This is also what we call the rate of change. So as x goes 3 units to the right, the y values are only increasing by 1 unit. Notice something here. If I pick another point along the curve, notice that the tangent line, the rate of change at that particular point is going to be different. So the slopes are not all the same for the entire curve. So at that particular point, the slope of the tangent line would be 10 over 8. So I get a rate of change of 5 fourths. So as we look at the curve, we notice that it starts to get a little bit steeper there. So the rate of change is different at that point along the curve. So this rate of change says that as your x value increases by 4, then the y values are increasing by 5 units. All right, so we look at this idea of the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. So what we would like to do to develop this idea of a derivative, our derivative is going to be a formula that we use to actually calculate the slope at any point along our curve. What we're interested in doing is finding the slope of the tangent line at any particular point along the curve. Knowing that it changes as we move along the curve, we need a formula to tell us what the slope is at any particular point. We're going to start first with this idea of the slope of the secant line. So a secant line um, actually intersects the curve at two points. So here I have a secant line, and it intersects the curve at two points, P and Q. This line right here actually measures um, average rate of change, so it doesn't tell me exactly how the curve is changing between P and Q. Okay, notice that the function itself actually goes and dips below. There's a basically the secant line is approximating how the curve is changing. Okay, so this is what we call average rate of change. What we're looking at what is the slope of this secant line. So before we can find the slope of a tangent line, first we're going to look at something a little bit easier, the slope of the secant line. Now we know how to find the slope of a line if we have two points on a line. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, and if I have, so if I have two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, then I can easily find the slope of a line that connects them. Well, we're not given specific points here. We want to define this in terms of the function f of x. So here's what we're going to do. So here's the x value of this point, and we want to find the y value of this point in terms of the function f of x. Well, to find the y value for any x, all I have to do is plug that x value right back into the function, and then I can find the y value. We're going to call this x sub 1 and y sub 1. 
Okay, now we're going to move on to Q. Now, how do I find Q? I really know nothing about anything about point Q. What we're going to do is we are going to move horizontally. So I am going to move some horizontal distance H to get from P to Q. So moving horizontally affects the X values. I'm going to call this distance H. And of course, this point right here along the X axis would now be X plus whatever horizontal distance I went. So that would be X plus H. So the X value of this point now is X plus whatever horizontal distance I moved to the right to get to that point. To find the Y value, I would have to plug in X plus H right back into the function. So we're going to call this X sub 2 and Y sub 2. So we've defined the pair, the ordered pairs here in terms of the original function f of x. So to find the slope of the secant line and to measure this average rate of change, um, really pretty easy. I take the y to sub 2 value, which we defined as f of x plus h. We're going to subtract off y sub 1, which is f of x, divided by um, x sub 2, which is x plus h, minus x sub 1, which is just x. So what's really nice here is that in the denominator, the x's cancel, x minus x, and we end up with the slope of the secant line as f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So it's the change in y values divided by the change in x values. Notice that the difference in the x values, of course, would be this distance h. This will be the difference in that horizontal direction. So h represents the horizontal distance between the two points. So this tells me the slope of the secant line, but does not get me to what we call the slope of the tangent line. So this is the slope of the secant line, but how do I get to finding the slope of a tangent line where the line intersects the curve at a single point? It's a little bit more interesting to find the slope of a line if I only have one single point. So how do we do this? Okay, so to find the slope of the tangent line, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the idea of the secant line. We had that secant line that went through the curve at two points, P and Q. And we're going to start moving that Q point closer and closer and closer. So we're going to choose a, a Q, that second point getting closer and closer and closer. So our tangent line is approaching all of these tangent lines as Q gets closer and closer. Our tangent, our secant lines are approaching what we call the tangent line that goes through the curve at that single point. So we're going to keep choosing a point Q that's closer and closer and closer and closer to P. And therefore, we're approaching what we call the tangent line um, at that particular point P. So let's notice what's happening as we do that. As the P and Q value get closer together, as we move Q closer and closer and closer and closer, the H distance or the horizontal distance between the two points obviously is getting smaller and smaller. So the horizontal distance between the two points is going to be shrinking. Now if the points coincide, our horizontal distance would be zero. And then when we look back at our slope formula, we will be dividing by zero. So we don't actually want the points to actually coincide. We want to know what is the what is basically the value as Q gets closer and closer and closer. In other words, as H approaches zero but doesn't actually achieve a horizontal distance of zero. So as h approaches 0, then what is that slope of that tangent line that we are actually approaching? That should sound sort of familiar. It should sound sort of like a limit. And that's exactly what it is. So as h gets closer and closer to 0, hence the limit, we're talking about the limit, uh, we actually get the slope of the tangent line that we want. We call this also the instantaneous rate of change because it's exactly what's happening at a particular point, not over an interval, but exactly at one particular x value on our curve. So we are actually going to define the slope of the tangent line to be the limit as h approaches zero, so as that horizontal distance shrinks to nothing, of that slope formula. 
that we use to find the slope of the secant line. So the slope of the secant line formula and the slope of the tangent line formula are almost exactly the same, except if I want to find the instantaneous rate of change, I send that horizontal distance to zero. Okay, so there's a difference between those two ideas. Um, one thing we want to note is that when we talk about limits, we're talking about a double-sided limit here for the slope of our tangent line. And therefore, the right-hand limit and the right left-hand limit have to match. So as I approach from the left of P and from the right of P, okay, I'm going to go back up here. As I approach from the left and from the right, so I could choose a point Q on this side, and as this point Q gets closer and closer and closer, what I need in both, in both of these cases, I need the tangent line to basically be the same if I approach from the right or if I approach from the left. I need those tangent lines to be the same regardless of which side I approach from. All right, so we need the double-sided limit to exist. And so that's actually conceptually really important. All right, so let's compare the two formulas. The average rate of change, so if I want to know what's happening on average over a particular interval, this would be the slope of the secant line, so the slope of a line that contains two points on the curve. Um, then we're just going to use basically that difference quotient or that simple formula change in y over change in x. If I want to know the instantaneous rate of change, in other words, the slope of the tangent line at a particular x value, in other words, a single x value or a single point on my curve, so I want to know what's happening at exactly that little moment, at exactly that one single point, then we're going to have to include the limit as h approaches zero. Okay, so we want that horizontal distance to basically shrink to nothing. So this is what we would define as the slope of the tangent line at a particular single point. Now, all of this leads up to what we call the derivative. Okay, so this is where we get started with the important things for calculus. The derivative of a function is the formula that can be used to find the slope of the tangent line at any point on the function. Okay, so this is important. Okay, what is a derivative? The derivative of a function with respect to x is basically the instantaneous rate of change at any particular point along the curve. Now, since this rate of change changes based upon what x is, what we actually end up with, with what we call the derivative, we actually end up with a formula to determine this slope at any particular point. Okay, so the actual slope will change based upon what x value we choose. But the derivative actually gives us a formula to plug in any x value we want and determine what the slope is at that particular point, so the instantaneous rate of change. So we define the derivative of a function. Okay, let's read f prime. We have f prime, so a little apostrophe looking thing by the function f. As the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So we're actually gonna find a formula. We're gonna calculate something. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put f of x plus h. We're gonna find out what that is. The second thing we're gonna do then is we're gonna subtract off f of x. Then we're going to divide by h, and then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the limit, that double-sided limit as h approaches zero. So we have a four-step process for actually finding this formula. All right, so let's look at how we're actually going to do this. So in WebAssign, they ask you to do it in four steps, and we're going to simplify this process for the next few examples. But um, we're going to go ahead and go through the four steps together here. So we said the first thing that we do, uh, if we want to get to this whole entire derivative, the first thing we're going to find out is what is f of x plus h. So we're going to take the function here that we're given, and in place of x, I'm going to put parentheses, and it tells us that in place of x, we're supposed to use x plus h. So I'm going to put in x plus h 
wherever x used to be in the original function. I'm going to simplify this. That would be uh, 10 minus 6x minus 6h. Okay, so in WebAssign you would say, okay, here is f of x plus h, and this is what I get when I simplify. So the next thing that they are asking us to do is to take what answer that we just got, and I'm just going to draw a line here to separate. It's to take f of x plus h, and we want to subtract off f of x. I'm going to say minus, and this is important. I'm going to put parentheses, and I'm going to put the original function in the parentheses. So it says minus, or subtract off the original function. So that's 10 minus 6x. Okay, and I'm going to simplify this. So that's 10 minus 6x minus 6h. Now this negative is going to change all of the signs in the original function f. So it's minus 10 plus 6x. Now, does anything start to cancel out? And what's nice is that 10 minus 10 cancels out, minus 6x plus 6x cancels out, and I'm left with minus 6h. All right. Now, for step three, I'm supposed to take that answer, and I'm supposed to divide by h. So I have minus 6h six six from the last step. I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide by h. Now does that simplify? Yes. h divided by h gives me negative 6. All right. Now I'm supposed to find, last little part here, I'm supposed to find the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 6. Now, in the last few sections, we talked about how to find the limit of a constant. Well, if I plug 0 in, well, there's nowhere for 0 to be plugged in because there's no h here. It's just a constant. So as h approaches 0, the limit of this is still just negative 6. So we end up with negative 6. So what we're saying here is that the slope of the tangent line at any point x along the curve is found to be negative 6. So it's just negative 6. In other words, it never changes. The slope never changes. Let's see something. That makes a lot of sense because this right here is actually a line. So f of x is the same thing as y. If we think about this, this is y equals, um, let's rearrange it a little bit, negative 6x plus 10. That's the slope of a line, y equals mx plus b. The slope at any point along this curve is always going to be negative 6. So we actually kind of found what we would expect to find for a line. A line has the same slope for any x value. So this basically is telling me that the slope at every single point along this curve is always negative 6. So that makes a lot of sense with what we know about the slope of a line. Now before we leave from this problem, I do want to write it out formally. We would say that the derivative of the function f, or f prime of x, is equal to the constant negative 6. So before we leave this problem, I do want to mention that this would be our final answer.